Good morning. I welcome you all to the online Sunday worship service, sixth Sunday after Trinity. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the people of his pasture. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love, and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son, who died for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by God's Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, 
Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. May we find peace in your service, and in the world to come, see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the second book of Samuel, verses 6, chapter 6, verses 1 to 5, and 12 to 19. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000, and David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah, and Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God, and Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and on psalteries, and on timbrels and on cornets and on cymbals. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they that bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was guard, girded with a linen ephod, so David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael Saul's daughter looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it into his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well as to the women as men, to every one a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine. So all the people departed, every one to his house. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is Psalm 24. 
The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Salah. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Salah. Praise the Lord. A reading from Ephesians chapter 1, commencing at verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in Christ be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfilment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, chapter 6, verses from 14 to 29. Glory to Christ, our Saviour. King Herod heard of the healings and other miracles for Jesus' name and become known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, It is Elijah, and others said, It is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. But Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, 
and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother's Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Now I would like to invite Reverend Nick Mark to deliver the sermon. Let us pray. Faithful God, you will never look away from us or leave us in our need. Guide us through your word for us to listen for your voice, to look for your direction, and to walk each day in your love. Amen. There is a very simple statement that we all have to live with, and that is, the truth hurts. Let us consider that in relation to our Gospel reading, and the reading from Ephesians and in particular in relation to the title of my sermon, The Practice of Power. My text can be found in verse 25 of our Gospel reading, and is the words of Herodias to her father. I want you to give me, at once, the head of John the Baptist on a platter. What power to have! Many of us would say, I have no power because I am retired or I am only a minion who obeys somebody else. All of us have power of some sort or another. We all have power we often don't appreciate. For example, every time I drive a car, I have the power of life and death, not only over any passengers I may have, but over other vehicles and pedestrians. In our Bible reading, Herod was a very worried man. He married his brother's wife, was threatened by the relatives of the wife he had rejected. He was eager to placate Herodus, who was full of hate for John because he had rejected her and spoken against her. Herod was even more worried by the fact that the teachings of John both challenged and puzzled him. He was also in terror of the amazing works of Jesus. I have great admiration for people who have never, ever seen to annoy anyone else and who in the process stayed true to their ideals. Today, though, we are looking at the norm, and that is that we all seem to annoy someone at some stage in our lives. Only occasionally 
does someone get killed for it? Sadly, we see in some societies death for a daughter who refuses to agree to an arranged marriage organised by her parents. Well, sometimes the same happens where somebody changes their faith. I trained from ministry with a young woman who converted from being a Muslim and she had to lose contact with her family after death threats and move to a different part of the country. The hard part of Christian living is admirably shown in our Gospel reading. It is a colourful story. The Roman historian, Josephus, tells a different version that still ends with the execution of John, but firmly puts the blame on Herod. In the Josephus version, Herod executes John because he fears that if he continues to speak the truth, then Herod's power will diminish because the people listen to John, not Herod. There is certainly no disagreement between Josephus and the four Gospels that Herod and his family were a thoroughly bad lot. What then do we learn from our readings today? The Gospel reading has a very modern ring about it, in the sense that, like many TV or film dramas, we have flashbacks. There is the crucial lesson for Herod, that you cannot remove your mistakes in life by killing them, or even move on. There have been a number of high-profile examples of people who have killed someone, running away, starting a new life, but years later being found out and having to face justice. The Gospel version of the story of John's death has much to commend it in the way it shows how hard it is to live a lie as Herod had to. Even John's Gospel of Love appealed to Herod. There is in our Gospel passage a real question opening up for every modern Christian about how fearless are we in trying to bring the Gospel to the world. Yes, we preach the message of repentance. Do we preach it though in a compelling way? So often the Christian church of the Western world tries to soften the message because of the fear that we are deterring converts. When we look at Herodias, the mother, we see a person who bears grudges against both her husband and against John. Herod, she thinks, has been weak in dealing with the upstart. John has spurned her and told her the truth. Herodias wants her revenge at all costs. It doesn't seem to concern her that by using her daughter, she may be damaging her. In our modern world, we see children exploited ruthlessly in child armies and the like and in the brutality in Syria and Yemen. God gives all of us power to exercise in a responsible manner in support of kingdom goals. Our Gospel story breaches irresponsible use of power. Lord Acton, the historian and politician, wrote to Bishop Creighton, in 1887, power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Great men are almost always bad men, even when they exercise influence and not authority. Herod lacks maturity of thought and action. He is ruled by the desires of the moment, he makes a grand gesture, promising half his kingdom. Instead of admitting this mistaken comment, he has John executed to avoid appearing weak in front of his dinner guests.
Herod has a fragile ego. Something in common with modern tyrants of our world, like President Putin, for example. In all key decision-making, we need to reflect on who we listen to. Herod, desperate to please, listens to his wife and daughter, who have warped agendas and little interest in Herod's welfare. God, it seems, has been omitted from the equation. In 1955, a Quaker pamphlet coined the term speaking truth to power. It is a non-violent political tactic used by those brave enough to peacefully object to tyranny. It has been used by brave folk like Mahatma Gandhi, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, Dietrich Bonhoeffer and many others against misuse of authority. Jesus teaches humility and love as a way of life that starkly contrasts with that led by Herod and his family. If we think about our reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, there we can see what Christian power is all about. One of the first bishops of the church, John Chrysostom, reflected on Herod and his family by describing them as being made captives by their pleasure, led around like sheep wherever the wolf may drag them. Of Paul, he said, note well the weakness of the tyrant compared to the one in prison. We can be assured that whoever we are, whatever we have done, that God is there urging us, urging us on to make the kingdom of God on earth an operating reality. I always think that Paul's trans from Christian persecutor to promoter of Christianity demonstrates that with the help of the Holy Spirit the most daunting of tasks can be achieved. Let us learn to listen to God and have the faith in God to take the opportunities God gives us to avoid making mistakes like Herod did. Further to respect the humility and love we find in Christ and to remember there is no shame at all in admitting at crucial times we are wrong and being ready to accept forgiveness from God. Amen. Let's pray. Let us pray to God, whose righteousness is made known by his mighty word and works. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find rest in you. Grant us purity of heart and strength of purpose, that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing your will, and no weakness hinder us from doing it, but that in your light we may see light, and in your service find our perfect freedom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep your church, called to be your messenger on earth, and the channel of your grace, in faithful service of the gospel. Defend her in adversity, and give to your priests and ministers courage to witness in word and deed. We pray for our churches, for those who make your church in this place, the faithful who worship here, or from their own homes with us. Our leaders, particularly Paul, our Bishop Kevin, and our Primus Mark, we pray that Paul and his family, 
may be refreshed by a well-deserved break starting this week. And may they know that with your ever-present support, the Church will continue its work of worship, mission and support during this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn the hearts of those who misuse their power over others. Bring hope and freedom to the places where people live in fear of tyranny and injustice. We pray for those places where to be a Christian is dangerous. We heard of St John the Baptist being beheaded in today's Gospel. Well, that's, well that still happens today, I'm afraid. We pray for the people of the much troubled nation of Afghanistan. With the withdrawal of many peacekeeping forces from around the world, including from our own country, the Taliban are seeking to take control of this country in a repressive and often cruel way. We lift the people of that country to you, Lord, and ask for your blessing upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we have been made members of your family by adoption, bless our human families with your continual presence. Guide us to follow the way that you have prepared for us in all our relationships with others. We pray for our own communities. We ask for your blessing on those on summer holiday just now. School children, teachers and other staff, families, and also on the many who visit Scotland, particularly in this year of the so-called staycation. Keep them safe as they travel to and from their holidays, and may they all find refreshment, peace and renewal, both as individuals and as families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy on all who suffer for the sake of truth. Comfort those who are unjustly imprisoned, and those who have been brought by human judgment into the shadow of death. We pray for the Covid situation, with alarmingly high numbers of cases again in our communities. May our Scottish Government act wisely to protect life and health. And we do ask for your blessing upon those who have to make the very difficult decisions to balance freedom, economic prosperity and health and life. This is not easy. We are asked to pray this week for Janice Moffat, Anne Fern, Vincent, Mary Check, Ruth Howard, and for Christian Taylor, who is recovering from an operation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died violently and alone. Grant them the peace that was denied them at their end and bring them to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. We think for a moment of those who have died known to us, either recently or in the past. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now have a period of silence as we pray for those things close to our own hearts. Loving Lord God, may we confess your name to the end. May we emerge unsullied and glorious from the traps and dark powers of this world. As you have bound us together 
in love and peace, and as, together, we have persevered through times of hardship, may we also rejoice together in your heavenly kingdom. We ask this in all our prayers, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us present our offerings to the Lord. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own we give you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in the very place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ, your Son, our life, and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the old company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son, born in human flesh. He is the Word existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to allness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power, you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night, when he was given up to death, knowing that his hour had come, Having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made on with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, there may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last, in your new creation, we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed.
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. How mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. How mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Give thanks to our gracious God, whose mercy endures forever. Let's pray. Living God, in this sacrament we have shared in your eternal kingdom. May we who taste this mystery forever serve you in faith, hope and love. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Father, your steadfast purpose is the completion of all things in your Son. May we who have received the pledges of the kingdom live by faith, walk in hope, and be renewed in love until the world reflects your glory, and you are all in all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us receive God's blessings. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>